Hey, how's it going? I'm Derek Kirk of Effectatron, and if you didn't know it, I wave every time that I say that, and I just kind of realized that that's silly, but I'm going to keep doing it anyway. All right, today we are going to learn how to create this really cool image where you can actually replace the image and get whatever you want, whether it's space or a nice, beautiful sky, and have that reflect on a nice pond of water or body of water perfectly. We're going to figure out how to get this image not only as your back plate back here, but also to reflect perfectly across your water and work correctly with your cameras and actually have your scene lit by your back plate as well. So I keep mentioning a back plate because that's commonly what it's referred to for this big texture image behind your scene. But the cool thing is, is we're actually not using a back plate for this per se. As we mentioned later in the video, you may have had issues with creating a dome light and then creating a back plate and having that back plate not work properly with reflections in your scene. And so this just fixes it. And it's because we don't use the dome light at all. We use the area light. And we'll get into that and basically this tutorial was going to be just how to set up your area light and then how to create it and have it reflect on your scene but then i just love making these these are like my bob ross winter scenes i could just make these forever so i kind of got carried away so if you you know want to keep watching beyond learning how to do the area light i'll show you how to create this scene that you're looking at here bringing in the character and everything so let's go ahead and get into it Firstly, I want to say thank you guys so much for the support. You guys have been super supportive over the last month or so since I've been pumping out a lot more content. I've got a lot more subscribers. And to each of you and everybody that got my Gumroad downloads and free materials, check the links below to see those. But thank you guys again for all the support. It really means a lot and it means a lot for the growth of this channel and, and me. This is all I do. So um, it really helps support me and my, my life, uh, my family. <laughs> so thank you again. I uh, just really appreciate it, you guys. Um, be sure to subscribe and ring that bell if you're, you like what you see. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into it. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at creating this. So firstly, let's create our body of water. We'll do a plane. We'll stretch it back and stretch it out wide. And we'll go wider here. And we'll just kind of zoom back here. We just kind of want this to go off into the distance and cover our whole horizon. There we go. Okay, now let's go ahead and add some landscapes here. Scale these up a bit, bring one in, make some bodies of water, cop control, click and drag, go to this landscape. Uh, we'll change the seed, maybe make it a little lower and we'll move it over a bit. I'll move it over this way a bit. Control, click and drag, make a copy of that, change the seed and slide it over. And we're just gonna kind of, and really we're just kind of creating some just organic river looks here and we're just going to control click drag one more time we're just kind of creating a river here we're going to control click drag go back here rotate all three of these scale them up a bit there we go okay we just want to cover up that horizon just a bit let's stretch these out a bit there we go okay so now we have like this nice body of water and a river and we're gonna have this is gonna be our water and our mountains here. And this is we're not doing a full in depth scene creation, but we're gonna just show off uh, some usefulness uh, for this method. So we're gonna go ahead and just grab our standard material, throw it on all of our landscapes, control click drag to apply these. Beep, 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 beep. And then for our plane, we're gonna create a very shiny material. So rather than doing something with like subsurface scattering, and with water and have it so it changes colors to the depth and stuff like that. We're just gonna worry about reflections right now. So we're just gonna go with black and then we're gonna go 0.05 for the roughness. And that's gonna go on our water here. And then instead of here, what we can do is go to our node editor, hit C, type in bump. And we're just gonna add a little bump map here to give it a little bit of waves. And then we're gonna type in maxon for maxon noise. Click and drag that in. Control, sorry. Connect our max on noise to the texture input. Then connect the purple dots, bump to bump. There we go. And if we want, we can go ahead and open up the Redshift interview. And you can see how this is working. And if you want to see how your noise is being applied, you can just hit the little S here. And we'll take a look and it shows our noise here. So we can see what we need to do is go into our noise, change it to FBM. 
And then we're going to scroll down and we're going to change the scale of it to 20. There we go. And then we're going to change the scale of the X value here to three. And that's just going to spread that out a little bit there. So that's going to give us this nice bumpy water look. We can unsolo this and you'll see we have these nice rippling waves and it's a little intense. So let's go ahead and just go into that material again. Scroll down to the bump and change that to 0.2. We just want it to be subtle. Okay, so now what we need to do is we want to create this background. So normally what you think you would do is go to lights, dome lights, uh, you'd add in a background, you know, a cool HDRI map of something you have, and you know, maybe you have an HDRI map or something you want to load it in, and you kind of get these reflections, but it's kind of hard because it stretches out your images and stuff. You can't find the right image, and you can go to your back plate, enable that, and bring in your texture there. But you'll see we have our back plate, and the sky looks correct here, but we're still getting the reflection from our dome lights here. So this isn't correct. So there's actually a much easier way to do this and you get more accurate color information as well from this. So let's just go ahead and delete this dome light and set this up. What we're gonna use to create this look is actually the area light. So first thing, click this button. That's gonna create an area light for you. What we need to do is have a giant area light back here in the background and it's gonna be facing the camera and that is going to have an image on it and that image is going to be visible and that's what we're going to use to create our light. So how to do this real quick, easy way. What I like to do is once I have my camera kind of in the right spot, I create my camera. And now what I do is I right click my area light, go to animation tags, target, and I want to drag that camera into the target. And what that's done is now if I move my light around, it's always going to be looking at my camera. So that's going to be helpful when I need to grab my light pull it way back behind my scene, and then we need to scale it up. So when you're scaling it up, you need to be mindful of the fact that you can't tweak your texture inside of your light here. So let's say, for instance, most of our images are going to be 16 by nine. So let's go ahead and say 9,000 for the height and 16,000 for the width. And that's gonna create that rectangle shape for us and we can adjust it later, but let's go ahead and just move it over. And now we can hit T and scale it up. And we just want those borders to go off of our screen here. So now inside of our area light, if we look at our scene right now, you're gonna realize that it is incredibly bright because area lights work in a way that without normalized intensity on, the size of the area light amplifies the intensity. So with an intensity of 100 and a giant area light, it's going to be very, very bright. So we just need to take that intensity down to one. So now we have this nice, moody, nice lighting. So what we can do is go in here underneath the texture, underneath the color information here inside of the object tag of our area light. Click this little folder, go to our light. And now we can choose a background image. So let's go ahead and just choose like this nice sky image. And it doesn't have to be an HDRI, it's just an image. And you may notice that this one isn't quite 16 by nine, so it's being stretched vertically. So what we need to do is just kind of squish down the height a little bit. So we're just gonna go in here in our front view and just squish that down just a bit to kind of get that right. And we're just gonna do it rough right now. And obviously you can do it better later. Go ahead and raise that up so that it's you know, just beneath the horizon. And you're gonna notice we have these really nice reflections on our water, but we don't have our sky. All we need to do is enable visible. Check visible and voila, now you have this really pretty sky and the reflections on your water are working perfectly and you can move around and you know obviously it's still getting good. And the cool thing is, is that we actually have the right color information coming from our scene here but you may notice that it's not super bright. So you think, okay, I'll just turn this up. Well, now your background is being blown out. So you don't actually want to do that. What you want to do is just create a copy of your area light and then uncheck visible. Now you can turn that up about to say three and you'll get the benefits of that there. And if you want to, you could even go into that second area light, go to the coordinates and just tick it forward one in the Z, and that's gonna bring it just a little bit closer than that backlight to let that light all the way shine through. So it's not being blocked by that other light at all. So this way we can still, we can correct the you know, amount of light that we're getting. 
and bring that in without affecting our background light here. So there you go, that's how you can create this really nice clean look. And the super cool thing about this is now that we have this created, I mean, obviously this works with environments and stuff like that because it's an area light, but it's just really easy to change the entire mood of your scene just by loading in a different image. So instead of being on earth, we can say, let's be in space. And instantly it's going to create us into space here. And we're just gonna scale this. And we're gonna go into both our area lights here and just make sure we go back up a little bit. Stretch that back out, let's do 10,000. So now we can be in space, you know, we can make this black if you wanted and shiny. You know, obviously you can add some displacement and bump and stuff and create a really cool scene. But this is how you can create that really nice clean reflection off that water that's gonna reflect that background perfectly. And so you can do cool intergalactic things as well as just cool things on Earth. You can bring in some Quixel assets and make really nice islands and maps and just have a nice sky back there if you wanted. You know, really you can load in whatever image you want that works as a background. We can do some like sci-fi, pretty cool world. And you can see how it's changed all the color information of our planet here as well. So just a really neat way to get that information and work. It works a lot cleaner and easier than a backplate. You can still add a dome light to kind of fill in the rest of the lighting for your scene and stuff if you want, uh, but you don't have to. So real quick, let's just change our area light here. Let's do the galaxy, which we just, I mean, this is just Google image. These are just Google images that I found. We'll do the galaxy. I think our, my mountains are being, are just weird. Obviously you can add some displacement and stuff to your mountains and some segments to your mountains. And it's just going to help clean that up a little bit. But if you wanted to, you could add a object redshift environment, take that down to like 0.003, the 0.001. Yep. And we're going to get that color information actually provided from that image as our environment light. So pretty cool. You could do that or, you know, you can leave that. You can add a sun if you want, create your own image in front. So let's just go ahead and say uh, a new area light. Actually, let's just, we'll just copy this area light, but we're going to take out this tag here and we're going to change it to a disc and we're going to say like a thousand by a thousand. So now we have this area light back here and what we're going to do is we're just going to lower that down and scale it up and we're gonna take a look at this. So this should be this like cool sun that's shining and we wanna make sure that it is visible. There we go. So now we can come in here, make this like orange and increase the intensity of this and add some bloom, you know, and now you've got a really cool, space scene going on here. And the coolest thing with all these space scenes is you always have this little guy walking around. So real quick as a bonus, let's just go ahead and add in a little guy walking. So in order to do this, so what we need to do is go to Mixamo, Mixamo.com. And basically if you have an Adobe subscription, you can use this, but I think it might be free now, correct me if I'm wrong, but you can try it for free at least. But once you log in, just go ahead and you can search for whatever character you want, or you can bring in your own character models and it gives you the ability to put them in all these scenarios and make them animate. Just try to get one with a T pose. That's going to be your best friend. So you can bring in whatever kind of creature, astronaut, spaceman, monster, whatever you want, as long as it's a biped and bring that in. And what we're going to do is I like this biker guy. He's one of the presets here. I think his name's like racer. So he's the racer guy underneath the characters. And then for the animation, I just like to do walking. I choose start walking. We're just walking actually. But she's walking and you can see that kind of automatically just gives them that motion of walking. And so now you have your character or this guy, whatever you want, and you can just say download. I can do an FBX. We want to choose 24 frames per second. We want his skin. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> with some fava beans and we're just gonna download that. Once that's downloaded, we'll save that and we'll close this up and we'll go into our file here where we have that FBX. We'll grab that, bring that in, hit okay. So we're just gonna click and drag and drop that into our Cinema 4D. That's gonna give it a second to think. It says it's loading down there. 
and it's going to open it up in its own scene real quick. Okay, so what we can do with this is firstly, I just like to create a null, grab both of these, throw that into the null, and then I like to copy that, hit control C, go to our space scene here, hit paste, that's fine. And we're going to go to file and save real quick. And now that we have our guy in our scene, you can see it's, it's brought him in here. We've got this null and we can just slide him back towards the camera. And you realize that he's gigantic and that's not quite the look we're going for. Let's go ahead and grab this null, rotate it around 180 degrees. And it's not very cool that he's huge. That's not really the, the style of the scene that we're going for here. Bam. <laughs> yeah, kind of weird. So what we can do is scale him down. Now, if you just hit T and try to scale this guy, you're going to break him. And he's going to become this weird mutant monster of broken bones. Look at, his, look at his hands just curl up in pain here. Oh, right. I don't know why I'm doing. OK, so instead of doing that, all you gotta do is click and hold this cube here and go to object scaling. And now when we scale this down, oh my gosh, scale them right down, no problem. Okay, now we can go back to model and hit E and we'll bring him a little closer to the camera here in our top view. Maybe not too close. Yeah, we want him to walk into the sun. And we're gonna go ahead and render that out. Oh, money, look at that. Pretty cool, so let's push him up a little bit. Let's get him into that sun reflection a little bit more. I think we can come in here, go to our area light, and actually increase this up to like 1.5 and make this background just a little bit brighter. There we go. So there you go. Now we have this really nice, cool space scene that we brought our guy in here. He's walking around and we can add some displacement and some rocks and scattered around on our environment. But the main thing here is that we figured out just a cool way to create our backgrounds and our reflections really clean and easy. And we might can even scale down our bump here. You could even get rid of the bump altogether if you want to. Let's just go down here, go to bump, and really scale that down to 0.02, barely any bump at all. Let's just let that be like a much cleaner reflection. We can scrub through our timeline here and get them, you know, mid walk a little more if you want. Give yourself some options. But there you go. Cool little space scene. We can clean that up with some extra uh, details and stuff on here or add planets and things. The cool thing is we just have this really cool background, this back plate. So we've got this really nice look here. Let's go ahead and add a redshift environment and change this down to 0.001. Go even lower and make it like a dark purple. Cool. Purple haze. You feel fine. All right. There's a little extra stuff in there, but I mean, basically it's pretty easy. Just get your area light back there. Make sure you're mindful of the way that the texture, the size of the texture is so you don't distort your image. Uh, ideally, just type in the pixels for the size of the area light and then just scale from there. Make sure it's facing your camera or at least forward. And you're just going to have these really cool reflections. So the cool thing is because it, if you set it to face your camera versus just facing forward, no matter where you move your camera and what angle you go to, you're going to have that nice clean reflection because it's facing your camera. Okay, so so pretty cool little way to create those really nice clean images very easily. There you go. Hopefully that was helpful if you found that helpful or if you want to know more about, you know, if you want to create more sci-fi stuff. I'm kind of on a sci-fi kick right now. Uh, so I really enjoyed this. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, really cool, simple trick. If you guys enjoy this, please be sure to leave a like and subscribe and ring that bell. If you haven't, it means a lot. Then supports me and the channel and just helping other people find my tutorials. See you next time.